So in BotPress, we mainly use five types of variables. Strings, numbers, booleans, objects, and arrays. Strings are what we use to just display plain text or numbers or characters or anything of the sort like hello world, exclamation marks, uh, quotation marks, special characters. We can also store numbers in them, but that is where the number variable comes in. Number variables are specifically for storing numbers. They cannot contain anything else. I might think, well, why would I ever use a number variable if I can just use a string variable? Because strings are just so much more universal. I can use them to store anything. Well, the thing is you can't do math calculations with string variables. You can only use number variables, so it's very useful. Next, we have the Boolean. And the Boolean is very, very simple to understand. It's either true or it's false. This is quite a useful type of variable. For example, currently it's raining, so you can say workflow.rain equals true. Let's say you have a bank, then you can see very easily if someone is in debt, you can just have the Boolean that says true or false. If a Boolean does not have a value, it will be saved as null. However, the computer will read it as false automatically. Next up are objects, and they are extremely useful. An object is basically like a folder on your computer where you can store many different other folders and other files. So let's say that you have a person. So let's take me, for example, you can have my name, my age, my country of birth, my ethnicity, my home address, and whether I have debt with my bank. So my name would be a string because it's obviously just text. My age would be a number so that we can do calculations with it. Let's say that we have three different people and we want to calculate the average age of those three people. If my age was a string, I wouldn't be able to do that math calculation. It needs to be a number. So we'd have my age as a number. We'd have my address as a string. We'd have whether I am in debt with my bank as a Boolean because it's a simple yes or no. We have my ethnicity as a string and we also have my country of birth as a string. Lastly is arrays. The simplest way that I can explain an array is basically it's like a list. Let's say that we have a list of fruits. Arrays will make it very, very easy to add and subtract from that list. So let's say that you want to remove banana and peaches and grapes specifically. It's pretty easy to do that. In a later episode, you'll probably see how we're going to use um, arrays to give our user uh, options instead of having to type each out individually every single time. All right, so the first thing you want to do, you want to just go into your browser, you want to type in WordPress, click on the first link. All right, and here we are in our fresh account. It really doesn't matter what you choose here. So just say your clients, and let's just say you're an agency. All right, so we are in a blank account, completely fresh. We're gonna say create a chatbot. And there we go. Now our first chatbot is created. It auto generates a name. We can rename it in a second. You click on edit to start. And then we're just gonna say start from scratch. Use template. All right, so first off, let's delete all the fluff. So this is not needed. This is not needed. All right, so first things first, let's rename our bot to something appropriate. So let's just call this test bot. So first we're gonna get familiar with some very basic code. So just right click on your workspace and click standard node. Then on this uh, collapsed panel right here, you're just gonna hover over that piece. Oh, this will sometimes happen. If you are selected on a start node or the end node and you go to add a new card, it will not say node cannot accept these cards. What you do is you just simply click away on your workspace like that and now it should all pop up. All right, now you're gonna add an execute code card. We will always code in these. And then you're gonna click on this or you can click right here. There's a shortcut like that. All right, so let's create a basic object for a person. So we're gonna to go to our variables here. We're gonna say create a variable. All right, so here you're immediately greeted with a few options. So first off, scope is where the variable will be used. Workflow variables will be the ones that you use the most. Those are variables that will only be used in your current workflow. And now you may, might be asking, okay, what is a workflow? Well, simply put, it's basically just different sections to a bot. You can do an entire bot simply in the main workflow. These are different workflows by default. We have main, error, timer, and conversation in. Default knowledge base, I'm gonna delete that for now because this bot will not need a knowledge base, but these are our default workflows and you cannot delete these. These will always be there. But let's say you create another workflow. So let's say you click right there or you just say new workflow. There we go, that's another workflow. Every single workflow has its own set of variables that will only work 
in that workflow. The reason we do this is that sometimes we have multiple workflows and some of the variables have the same names. You don't want that to overlap with other workflows. All right, so next up we have user variables. These variables are the same across the entire bot, across all your workflows. These are variables that you kind of want to reference constantly. For an example, in our login system bot, we use a user variable so that it's the same across the entire bot and it's not just specific to one workflow. Bot variables are variables that the bot only uses, but this is the beginner's course, so you're never actually going to use it, so we're not going to dive too deep into that. Here's the most important part though, and this is the type. So Obviously, we're going to have a person, meaning that we are going to have their name, their date of birth, their ethnicity, their country of origin. We're going to have a lot of things under that. So if you guess correctly, so if you guess correctly, we are going to be using an object. In JavaScript, all our variables should always be in camel case. It's not a requirement, but it's good practice. So, so for example, if we want to name our object um, person info, we won't type it like this because it's got a capital letter. We don't want to write it in camel case, so we're going to do it lowercase. And then every subsequent word after the first word will then start with a capital letter. So person info, say if you want to put extra, it will be capital. It will not be lowercase because then it's going to look funny and then you won't be able to make out the words. So always like this, good practice. For description, you're going to leave it blank. It's not necessary. And for default value, you're also going to leave it blank. And then you can just say add. All right, so this is going to be a very quick lesson in how we define different variables. So now that we have our object, we're going to drag in an execute code card like this into our first node like that. And then we're going to edit the code. To do that, you can click on the shortcut right here or you can click on that right there. So this is how we define an object. So you're going to start off with workflow dot person info. Then you can click tab if you want to auto fill the first option, just like that. Now, if we had a user variable, we would write it like this user dot person info. However, person info is under our workflow scope. So it needs to be workflow dot person info. You can see the TypeScript is giving me an error because obviously person info is not under user, it's under workflow. So now we just say workflow dot person info. Now we are going to put an equal sign. A single equal sign in JavaScript means to reassign a value, give it this value. So workflow.personInfo equals. In just plain English, that will mean that person info must have the value that comes after this uh, equal sign. So now we're going to click our curly brackets button on the keyboard and you see it puts in two because in JavaScript, what you open, you need to close again. So now that we have our two uh, curly brackets like that, you can just press enter twice or once, it doesn't really matter. And this is how we are going to define the value that is person info. Now, if you paid attention, you know that a object is basically just a way where we can store a bunch of variables in one variable. Instead of having like 10, we can have them all under the object person info. So first off, we are gonna have name. So we can type name like that. And now we have a property called name. But now you're asking, okay, but how does the computer know that name is a string and not a number? Well, it's what comes after that. And now because we're gonna put two quotation marks like that, it knows that it has to be a string because no other variable you would define like that. So let's say my name is just the Baptist. So I'm gonna put that in. Now it's very important we put a comma. Okay, so that is our first, our very first, um, well, let's just call it our very first variable inside our object. All right, so now if we close out of our code, if we run this from the start, what will happen now is that my name will be under the name property of the object. So now that the computer has done what it's supposed to do, it needs to show us what it just did because we don't have a console in Botrus, we only have an emulator. So the way we do this, we go into your collapse panel. I'm going to explain later what all these different cards are. Then you're just going to go to the very top and say a send message text card. And it's very important you drag this after the code has been run. I've made the mistake a bunch of times, but the computer will always read from top to bottom in the nodes. So let's say it's the wrong way around like this. Okay. Let's say this card is ignored because some properties are missing. Obviously the card is empty, but the real error is that um, even if we wanted to display um, our object, it won't be able to because it hasn't been done yet. It only uh, calculates it afterwards and that's wrong. So it needs to be like this. It first needs to assign the, va the value and then it can actually display what it just did. And the way that it does display this is that there's a shortcut to this. You can just say add workflow person info. That means just say the value, just put down, just say the value that person info has. 
the more complicated, but you need to know this as well, the more complicated way to do this is to do two curly brackets like this and then type it up, workflow.personinfo. It's very important you know this because sometimes the app notation won't work. Sometimes if you do this, it won't work. It will now, but sometimes it will work. So it's important that you know that you can also use curly brackets. So now if we send a message to our emulator and basically it's gonna run this small little bit, and there we go, it displays the value that it has. Now it says we have an error, obviously it's just nothing's actually going on and the computer expects something to happen, but nothing is actually wrong with this. So now let's give it some other properties. So we're gonna click on our execute code card, we're gonna back into the code editor, and now we're gonna add some more values. So this time, let's add my age. So after our comma, very important, you just say age, colon, and then this time it won't be in uh, quotation marks because this is a number variable. The computer will know it's a number variable if it's a number and it's not in quotation. So my age is 18, so I'm just gonna put it in like that. I'm gonna put a comma and go next. And there we go. Now, if we exit it, are we gonna run the conversation again? Then that should display my name and my age. And there we go. My name is Ibertus and I'm 18. Now let's add if I'm legal to drive or not. Basically, this is going to be a Boolean. So because it can only be true or false, there is no sort of allowed to drive. It's either yes or it's no. So we're going to use a Boolean. We're going to click on our code editor, hit space again, and then we're going to call this drive. Let's say license like that, a colon. And once again, we do won't put this in uh, quotation marks so that the computer knows it's a Boolean. So we're just going to say true because I do have my driver's license. Very important. Don't forget your comma. And if we restart our conversation again, it will now show my name, my age, and if I'm licensed. And there we go. Now we're going to add a list of my hobbies, which you'll probably know is going to be an array. So now we're going to press enter for a new one. We're just going to say hobbies, colon. And this will also not be in quotation. What you will do is you will place square brackets. As soon as you place square brackets, the computer will know that this is going to be an array. So let's say that my first hobbies are meditation. Now we separate it with a comma and we put in our next value. Meditation, I like bikes. Put a comma after every single item, quotation. And let's say I also like to play guitar. And there we go. Those are my hobbies, so if we exit out, remember your comma. There we go, now if we exit out, it should show those as well. And here we go, my hobbies are meditation, bikes, and guitar. Now for our last one, just so that you know, you can put an object inside of an object. Hell, you can put an object inside of an object, inside of an object, inside of an object. It goes on forever, that's a beautiful thing. It's like organizing your room. With your room, you only have set amount of cupboards. In JavaScript, you have as many cupboards as you want. So we're gonna click on our code editor again. For this, let's just put my journey so far. So we'll call it journey, colon. And then as you saw here at the start, we use curly brackets to define an object. So let's put our curly brackets, enter. And as you see here, these are all indented about one tab space from the side. It's very good practice to use indents when you're coding. So for example, I'm not gonna put my different criteria here. That will look very unneat. It's good practice to tab it so that it looks proper. So now let's put, so now let's just put in every age of mine. So let's say when I was 16, I say put this in quotations, for example, so that the computer knows it's a string. At 16, I started my first business. Remember to put your comma. At 17, I started this business. Remember your comma, and at 18, I really started to make good money for my business. As you see, a bot press automatically color codes all your brackets so that you know which is meant for which. So you see these are pink, these two are pink because they're meant for the journey object, but person infos are yellow because it's now we're gonna close out and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna restart our conversation, we're gonna see what it says. And here we have. My journey is properly defined. It still gives me the error, but as you can see, it's not an error that we made because it's saying it's an unexpected error, meaning Botris doesn't even know what it is. 
So let's say that you didn't want to do this in an object, you just wanted to have different uh, variables for each property. It's quite easy to do that and we do the, the exact same way. You make a new variable, make sure it's in workflow, it's a string and we just call it name. Then it will be the exact same in the code. So let's say you wanted to define that variable as also my name, you just say workflow.name equals, very important, only one equals because we're gonna give it a new value and then remember your quotations and you just give it my name and the exact same thing will happen. Now, when we run our code, you see here that my name is defined as Ibertus. The same way that we define them in here is the exact same way that you just define them normally. All right, so now that we have defined our person info, let's start to now make some basic if statements because if statements will be by far the code that you use the most as a beginner. So we're gonna get enter two times just to keep it aesthetically pleasing. And we're gonna start our sentence with if. JavaScript is basically like a language. You can reason with it and you can speak and it will basically make sense to you. You can read JavaScript and it will actually make sense what you type. I'll explain what I mean in a second. So we'll start off with if. Very straightforward and a space. Now we're gonna put two normal brackets, round brackets like that. And you see it has two, remember, what you open, you have to close. Workflow.personInfo. Basically, if the user age, so workflow.personInfo.age, because we're gonna check in for the age specifically, is equal to, so three equal signs means is equal to, and one equal signs mean assign this value. So we are checking for the person's age, so we're using three of them. So if our person's age, that's like in plain English now, if our person's age is equal to 18. In an if statement like this, it will completely ignore what comes after it if this is false. It will only continue with this, what we're about to do, if it is true. That's very important. So now we're going to click out of our brackets because our criteria is finished. We're going to hit space and then we're going to insert curly brackets. You only need to press it once on your keyboard, but there we go. If the statement we made here is true, then the computer will do what is in between these brackets. So we're gonna hit enter on our keyboard once. So now we can type much easier, it's more aesthetic. So now we want to be able to say that, okay, if our person is 18 years old, they are allowed to drink. Let's say for here, if a person is 18 in my country, they are allowed to drink legally. So let's go add a property in our person info that says, are you allowed to drink? Yes or no, so it will be a boolean. So we'll go here, we'll hit enter because we're entering a new field. And remember to add your comma right there. And we'll call this can drink. We'll put our colon. And then we will just say uh, automatically it will be set to false. Remember your comma. But let's say if our user is 18. Now remember what comes between the curly brackets, the computer will do if this criteria is met between your uh, square with between your round brackets. So let's say if that person is of the age of 18, they are allowed to drink. So let's say workflow dot person info dot can drink is equal to remember only one equal sign because we are assigning can drink a new value. So let's make that true because the person is of age. So by default, it will be false. However, we're going to change it to true. So if we are run our code, we should have a can drink that is set to true. So now we're going to close out, going to reset our conversation and see what results we get. And there we go. Our can drink is set to true because we are 18. Our criteria was met, so the code ran. However, a person above 18 can also drink. So let's adapt our code to also look for people who are above 18. So now we need to change our three equal signs here. Instead of checking if it's only 18, to check if it's 18 and above. So we're going to take away the first two and replace it with a is bigger than sign. Now, the reason we still have our single equal sign here is because we're still checking if our user is 18. Because remember, it's 18 or higher, so it could be both. If we were checking for people that were only over 18, meaning that they can't be 18, we would remove the one equal sign, and this will check if they are only over 18. So if you're 18, you're not allowed, but if you're 19, you're allowed. However, we are checking for both, so we're gonna put an equal sign there. So if this code ran, it will come out the same. I will still get my true, 
because I am 18 or above, but we'll make sure. And there we go, I can store a drink. However, now let's go in our code and make me 17. So let's say I was a year younger. So now can drink should remain false because of this code won't run because our criteria is not met. If the computer reads all this, it does all the work and it gets here and this criteria is not met, it completely skips past it. So now if we run our code, there we go. Can drink is false because I'm 17, I'm not 18 or older. All right, so now just as a safety measure, this is not needed at all because by default, our, ver our user is false. However, now we're gonna say, okay, if they're not 18, do this. So now we're gonna say else if, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing with a little bit of a twist. We're gonna give it criteria again. So round brackets, workflow.personInfo.age is smaller than 18. So we're gonna say, only one one symbol this time because remember if we do this then it will check if our user is 18 and lower we don't want it to do that we want people that are 18 to be able to drink and people that are not 18 not be able to drink so we're only going to use that so if it's smaller than 18 then we're going to do remember space new brackets enter then we're going to say workflow dot person info dot can drink equals false. Basically, now the computer is going to read this and it's go, okay, if this is true, then I have to do this. But if it's not true, I need to do this. However, now I'd like to teach you about else. We use an else if as another criteria to check and then do an action. And else is done when none of our criteria are met. Well, if none of our criteria are met that we gave it, then it must do this. Now we are going to type else, we're going to say else, basically if none, if there's like an error in our person info of anything like that, so let's say that can drink is set to null or the age is null or something like that. So we don't want to accidentally let someone drink who's not allowed to drink. So it's important to know that obviously else does not check for any criteria. It's simply a backup if none of your criteria are met. So we don't need any criteria in an else. It's like a safety measure. So else, and then we put our criteria as workflow, dot person info dot can drink equals false. Lastly, if you want to add multiple criteria to your if statements, you can do it with two at well and symbols like so. So let's say you want to make sure that the person is 18 and above and that they are licensed to drive for some reason, then you can just say and and like so and then you could put more criteria. So basically, let's see, at the moment we are checking, so at the moment we are checking if they are 18 and older, and let's also check if they are licensed. So then we're gonna say workflow.personInfo.licensed equals true. And if basically now, if both of these criteria are not met, then it will, it will basically do the same thing. It will skip it and then it will look for the else if, check if the else if is true. And if that's not true, it will go to the else and do that. So yeah, you can put two criteria in one if you don't need to do else if, else if, else if for the same thing. You can do that and that. And if the entire criteria is not met between brackets, it will count the entire thing as false. Now let's cover reassigning a variable. So for this practice, we're gonna add a new field and we're gonna call it cash. We're gonna say colon, not in brackets because this will be a number. And let's just say 20,000 as an example. Put your comma there. So now my user automatically has 20,000. But now let's say that I picked up some money on the road. Let's say I picked up 100 on the road. So your first instinct is probably to do this. Workflow.personInfo. Cash plus 100 because I picked up 100 on the road. However, that is wrong, and I'll explain why in a second, but I'll just show it to you that it's wrong. So if we go to run our code now, it should say 20,100. But why doesn't it? Because we, we, we assigned it here. I mean, we told it that I wanted to add 100. That's not how it works. First, you need to tell the computer that you are reassigning a value. And how do we do that? Basically, you just say, you just put, okay, I'm going to do it and then I'm going to explain why I did it. 
person info dot cash equals. That is very important. What you're telling it is okay. This thing's new value should be it, its current value plus 100. It's very important. This is very important. I've wasted hours and hours because I didn't know this. So now if we close out and we run our code again, now it's 20,100. It's very important to write this down somewhere. Now that is basically how we edit the value of a number. We just say plus or minus or times or divide by or anything like that. You can probably guess how that stuff works. I don't need to do that as well. But we can't do that for a string. Remember when I explained the different variables, we want to specifically use a number variable when we're working with money because then we get to do stuff like that. If I had a string variable, it wouldn't have allowed me to do that. It would have just said that it can't give the value of a number to a string. But because it was a number, we are able to edit it. We are able to say minus 100 plus 1000 times by 20 million. If it's a string, you can't do that because a string is meant for text and characters. If you would like to reassign the value of a string, then you can do it. Then you can say, let's say my name at the beginning, we call it my name is just he Baptist. This is just in our, in our variable, not in our person info. This is just a variable. Workflow.name equals, let's say I'm someone else now. Let's say I'm Michael or however you spell Michael. Let's just say now my name will call, will be called Michael. You don't need to do this. You don't know, you don't need to say, okay, the old value is this. Now it's this plus this because a string, um, it can't be edited. Uh, a string can be, you can add to a string as such, but you can't do it in the same way that we did here. How you would do this is let's say you want to put my surname there. This is how you do it. You say workflow.name. As an example, let's say you want to add your surname. I want to add my surname to the workflow.name variable. So all that I need to say, workflow.name equals, because remember, it's the new value is the old value plus something. So let's say workflow.name equals its current value. So what it has currently, workflow.name, and I'm going to say plus my surname. And then we need to put that in quotations like that and just do the shortened version from the matter of it, just like that. And there we go. Now the variable name, workflow.name, will be Hibartus van der Marve. And there we go. If you check here, my name is now Hibartus van der Marve. How you, you can see, I forgot a space. It's pretty easy to fix this. Just go into your code and just add a space before the van der Marve. And there we go. Now it'll work fine. Code again. And as you can see here, now it has a space. Lodash is basically a JavaScript library of a lot of functions that we can use that just make your job and coding so much easier. For example, when we work with arrays, it's super easy to add and remove an item from an array using Lodash. Lodash has loads of function across all the variable types for strings, numbers, arrays, objects. I'm going to put a full list in the description. However, um, I'm just going to show you the most useful ones for arrays specifically. And then if we want to remove something from our list, all that we have to do is use this method pull and then in brackets, the variable that we want to pull it from, we want to pull from person info dot hobbies. And we want to pull the word, well, the item bikes. And now what we'll do, it will add woodwork and it will remove bikes. So. If we run our code again now, there we go. We have added woodwork and bytes is not in the list anymore. Lodash is extremely, extremely useful. I'm not going to list all the useful Lodash functions. I'm going to put them in the description if you're interested, as well as a short um, just description of what each uh, useful thing does. Um, but yeah, that's about everything of Lodash summarized.